Hi, everybody. Thanks for dropping in on another TNT. Uh, sad to say, a little bit inclement out there today, but hopefully another rain band passing by, and hopefully the weather's okay where you are. Now, a very auspicious day for a lot of Americans, indeed the rest of the world, September the 11th, so difficult to go past without acknowledging that date. Now, uh, all sorts of stuff to cover today, some of it more important than uh, other stories, but none as important as this one. Thief steals aluminium ladder from Patia apartment following another theft incident. Indeed, just looking at the back of that ute, it looks like there is, in fact, no ladder. And a thief stole an aluminium ladder from an apartment in Patia, marking the second incident at the apartment this year. The 26-year-old victim handed over CCTV footage to the Patia News, hoping to provide a lead to help identify a thief who had stolen an aluminium ladder from her apartment in Nong Pru. The CCTV footage clearly captured a man between 30 and 35 years old arriving at the apartment on a red Honda Wave. And then the article goes into a lot of detail about the theft of this aluminium ladder. And the article concludes, the victim expressed her hope the police would soon uh, catch the thief as she and the other tenants now live in fear with frequent break-ins and no progress in apprehending the culprit. Well, we do hope that that lone ladder and its rightful owner are soon reunited. Now to a story that people used to often complain, we're just covering far too much and stop talking about cannabis. Uh, well, we haven't spoken about it for about two months, but it's in the news again, covered by nationthailand.com. Medical Cannabis Act will be passed. This is according to Anaton, who is one of the Deputy Prime Ministers. Uh, he said yesterday that he has confidence that the new government will continue pushing the act that allows the use of cannabis for medical purposes. So as we await this actual act landing on the parliamentary desk and then, of course, being debated, there's a lot to read in some of the language being used and the words used, more importantly, the words not used. And Anderson says that we, that's the Pumjai Thai Party, have proposed the draft act to the Prime Minister and are waiting to see if it will be included in the policy statement to be delivered next week. Which is a bit of a veiled threat. You better include it in your policy statement next week or mm, I'll get really mad. And just remember that Pear Tong Tan Shinawat's father, he led the war on drugs and is fervently anti-drugs. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Also interesting that uh, the word recreational use has not been mentioned at all. And it added that the former Prime Minister Seitat Hawisin had previously discussed with the Public Health Ministry and other related agencies the drawing up of the Draft Act that highlights permitted use and control policies to prevent abuse. So Anerton and Pumjai Thai are part of a coalition. What are they going to give back to get their way? Anderton added that his party is willing to support the move to establish entertainment complexes with legal casinos in Thailand, as it would help attract foreign capital and create jobs. So I think Anderton Shavirakun making it quite clear what his side are willing to concede to, uh, to get the Cannabis Act passed by Parliament. And that should land on the desk, well, sometime over the next month, and then, of course, it will be debated. Okay, very quickly, talking weather, let's look at the big picture. And we go to the, uh, the website VentuSky.com and we can see the uh, tropical, well, it looks like a tropical depression now, but it's uh, moving northwest. It's called Babinka and it looks like it'll make landfall on the mid-Chinese coast. A good news for the Philippines, at least this time, that uh, it's not directly in the firing line with this particular tropical depression. But we head to the border up in uh, northern Thailand, the border with Myanmar, and the Bangkok Post reports busy Mae Sai border market flooded out. And normally bustling Se Lom Joy market on the border with Myanmar in Chiang Rai's Mae Sai district was shuttered and underwater yesterday, flooded by overflow from the rain swollen Se River. And the river broke its banks on Monday night after heavy rain. The river rose rapidly as anxious traders closed their shop and moved their merchandise to safety. The water was still up to one metre deep in some riverside locations yesterday. Now just compare that uh, video with 
this earlier photo that was on the Bangkok Post front page, and we can really see how far that uh, water has come. And plenty of other very high water flow there that uh, clearly caused a lot of damage, including cars and properties, and probably completely ruined a lot of people's lives up there in the north of Thailand. So hopefully the, uh, the floods and the rains will recede quickly and uh, that the damage can be addressed and people can get back to their lives nice and quickly. Okay, heading to Bangkok, we don't often talk about things like town planning, but uh, let's have a quick look. Thai PBS World reporting new Bangkok city plan battle rages over public benefit versus commercial development. The new Bangkok City Plan, set to take effect from next year, will bring significant changes to zones across the capital, sparking strong opposition from various groups, including the Thailand Consumer Council. Drawn up by the BMA, the plan will cover the entire 1,658 square kilometre area of the city and will replace the old 2013 zoning map. So it includes the Ratanakosan Island, the Ratchayotan area, Domlang District, the Latprao Ramindra Zone, Si Nakarin area, Minbury District, Taling Chan and Hawi Watanar Districts, Wongwian Yai, Suksa Wat and Floodways, importantly Floodways. And the draft plan would change the designation of Yao Rat, that's the Chinatown area, and Banglampu to densely populated zones allowing the construction of more commercial and government buildings. So areas like uh, Ratana Kosan and uh, Chinatown, the Yawarat area, are uh, the old historic part of the town. I think a lot of people would be aggrieved to see too much uh, commercial construction and more densely populated areas happening there. And the new plan paves the way for the Port Authority of Thailand to expand its operations at the expense of low income and deprived communities in the Klong Toi district. Where they're going to put these low income and deprived communities? That hasn't been addressed. And among those concerns is the plan to reduce the city's floodways uh, designed to drain or store flood water from 90,000 rai to 30,000 rai. So plenty to chew over there for critics of the new subdivision plan. Floodways, given what we were speaking about yesterday, I would have thought that getting rid of floodways wasn't a great idea in Bangkok. Another city in uh, Thailand that seems to get a lot of attention when it comes to things like maintenance, you know, the good old fixing the potholes, is Pattaya. PattayaMail.com reporting public frustration grows over road safety priorities in Pattaya. And the public frustration is mounting as residents express concerns about what they view as a misplaced focus on zebra crossings, while other critical road issues remain unaddressed. You sort of get the feeling you could publish this particular article every three or four months and it would be just as relevant then. And it goes on with uh, some highlighted areas plagued by numerous potholes, uh, prompting residents to argue that repairing these hazardous areas should take precedence over new pedestrian markings. And specific concerns include dangerous potholes near the U-turn on Circumvent Road and in front of the former Esso gas station, which have frequently caused accidents, particularly for motorcyclists. And residents highlight that poorly maintained road surfaces at major intersections are marked by visible cracks, potholes and uneven areas from previous road work. It's sort of same old, same old. I read these stories about Pattaya every three or four months and the residents are always pointing out the same old problems. Why don't they ever seem to get fixed? I'd be interested in people who live in Pattaya are giving us their point of view. It says people are also raising their concerns about the presence of homeless individuals on sidewalks along Second Road and suggested installing CCT cameras to enforce pedestrian safety laws, penalise vehicles that uh, fail to stop at crossings, and there are also calls for the use of more durable materials for road markings to prevent quick wear and tear. So what is it about maintenance and uh, roadworks in Pattaya? Why don't things ever seem to get completed? I will be interested in your comments. All right, to be put under the headline of Storm in a Teacup from ThaiPBSWorld.com, PM's mini heart gesture raised with National Corruption Watchdog. 
And this is before official photos were taken, just before the new cabinet and the prime minister were sworn in. And that uh, mini heart gesture popularised by uh, K-pop, particularly uh, BTS over the last 10 years. Let's go to the story. And serial petitioner Rung Krai Liki Watana mailed a petition to the NACC yesterday alleging the PM Petong Tan Shinawat engaged in ethical misconduct by performing a mini heart hand gesture during an official photo shoot at Government House last week. And most of her cabinet followed her lead until a civil servant informed them that the gesture was inappropriate while wearing formal uniform. Petong Tan then lowered her hands and the photo shoot occurred before she led her cabinet members in a swearing-in ceremony before His Majesty the King. And in the petition, Rungkrai asked the NACC to investigate whether the incident violated the Charter regarding ethical misconduct and to submit its findings to the Supreme Court for a ruling. Well, I don't think there's uh, any suggestion the Prime Minister was uh, thinking that the mini heart should be part of the formal photo. And I suspect the Supreme Court have probably got more important things to do. But, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll hear nothing more of that ridiculous story. And with that, thank you for watching today. Hopefully the weather improves in your part of the world, like I'm keeping my fingers crossed here. I understand there was uh, quite a big debate on at the same time I was recording my program. And a bit like uh, the cricket in Australia, won't be watching the whole thing, but I might watch the highlights Enjoy your Wednesday and we'll see you tomorrow.